Previously on Sar Trail, we had an incredible time at Lone Rock Beach. We were expecting it to be a beautiful location, and it truly is. But there is so much more of Lake Powell to explore. So, here we go. Lake Powell sits in the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. Glen Canyon covers over 1.2 million acres, and the Colorado River flows through it for over 169 miles. Glen Canyon offers hundreds of miles of 4x4 trails and dirt roads, along with over 100 miles of hiking trails. There are also countless campsites. Some of them are just a short drive off of the paved road. But our plan is to go deep, deep into the canyon. We are looking for a campsite that is on one of the lake-filled canyon areas that offers an abundance of seclusion. Glen Canyon is made up of large expanses along with narrow canyon areas as well. As we get further in, the terrain starts to change. The trail is less manicured and it traverses and travels on several dry riverbeds. As we head further down the trail, the canyon walls get higher and narrower. This is not a trail to travel on with rain in the forecast. Utah dry riverbeds are famous for changing from dry to full-on flood without much warning. To get to our campsite, we will travel on miles of dry riverbed. If this riverbed starts to flow, you will be stuck for a while. Even once the river stops flowing, the ground will be way too soft to drive on for several days. This area is very mineral rich and it shows in the ever-changing color of the rock walls. In the tight areas, you can see evidence of long-term standing water. You can see previous water lines that were full of clamshell remains by the thousands. These areas once held water, but they are not considered part of the lake bed. Right, so we have made it to our destination. This is in Glen Canyon. This is what's left of the shore of Lake Powell. If you know anything about Lake Powell, it is this enormous lake in Utah. Stretches 180 miles or a little bit more. But right now it's the water level. I mean, where we're at right now, we're gonna show you the rest of it, but where we're at right now used to be like Lakeshore. And the water level is so low. We'll show you. It's really sad how low the water is here. So they've told us some of the locals um, back when we were at Lone Rock have said that this is losing two inches of water per day. And over the past 10 or so years, it's just gotten lower and lower and lower and lower. And it's, it's really sad to see. Okay, so getting here, we took a bad trail at one point. 
and it was really sandy, really steep on the way up, and it wasn't level at all. And we got badly on three wheels. And that's the closest we've come to rolling our H3. We're very, very top heavy with the firewood and everything else we have on this thing. I'm still shaking. Natalie, she's not cold shaking. She's shaking from that. It, it was a scary moment for us. While we were teetering, her passenger side front was way up in the air. I just slammed it into reverse and started backing us down so we could get all four on the ground, but it was scary. We're good now, all four are on the ground. And uh, we are at what used to be the shore yeah. of Lake Powell here. Used to be a beach. <laughs> yeah, but we can hike down to it where there is actually some water. We'll show you this place around here. There's, I'm gonna say over there, millions of yards of dry lake bed. Yeah. And it's, we'll it's show really you, sad. we'll show you when we can, when there's good daylight, but. Right now we're gonna set up camp, make some dinner, get mommy feeling better, <laughs> let's do it. Overlanding has allowed us to teach Bailey all kinds of survival skills. And at eight years old, she is a sponge for absorbing all the new things we learned. It just takes a little time. Okay, so you guys see we're kind of up on this ledge above what you know kind of used to be the lake. And we're up pretty high, there's good wind. We've kind of positioned everything we could, like our shower tent, the back tailgate or the back door of the Hummer, to try to block some of that wind. Where we're standing out, it's not too bad. Where the fire is, it's really good. So what are we making tonight, baby? Chicken wings. <coughs> and we're gonna cook them over the fire on the new little... Brio. 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 <laughs> All right. So far, we're loving it. We still yes. got a lot more stuff to do on it. I think it's uh, awesome. So what are we doing here? How are we going to season them? Salt, pepper, or anything else? Chili powder and some paprika. That's that it. Good to yeah. me. I can't wait. Yeah, because that's what's going to give them a lot of flavor. Let's get over that fire. Let's go. Sounds good, baby. Yeah. The chicken wings were fantastic, but then again, most things cooked over real fire are. The next morning, there was very little wind and we were greeted with plenty of sunshine to light up the lake and the canyon walls. Lake Powell was created by the construction of the Glen Canyon Dam, which opened up in 1966. The lake is about 180 miles long and it has more than 161,000 acres of surface area with a catchment area of over 108,000 square miles. At its widest point, Lake Powell spans 25 miles. The lake has an average depth of 132 feet and the max depth of 583 feet. The water that makes up Lake Powell is in high demand. The always increasing residential, commercial, and agricultural needs put a huge strain on the water levels. The Glen Canyon Dam has an insatiable appetite for water. The hydroelectric generators produce over 4 billion kilowatt hours per year. The lake peaked back in 1980 and has been trending lower ever since. Some of the locals we met in town said that this is the lowest that they have seen the lake in over 40 years. The water level currently is 137 feet below full pool. That makes for countless acres of dry lake bed. 
Hey, good morning from camp, guys. It was a windy evening for a couple hours once we got up into the tent, but then the wind just died off, died off, died off, and we were able to get a really good night's sleep. So that was great. I mean, when the silence hit, it was like dead silent out here. And I'm gonna say this might be the most remote site we have ever camped on. This is seriously remote. Uh, some other trails around Moab are probably pretty close to this, but it was miles and miles and miles and miles of trail to get to here. And there's still miles of trails all around us. And we've seen like one person this whole time and they're not here. So it's pretty, pretty amazing out here. This morning, we're gonna get some showers and we're gonna heat up some water and get a really good shower. All three of us this time, not at the same time, but all three of us are gonna get showers this morning because it, it's not windy, the temperature's gonna start creeping up, so it's gonna be like a perfect morning to get a really nice shower. The previous water line of Lake Powell would put the shoreline about five feet below our campsite. It sits much lower today, but we are grateful to be close enough to walk to this water source. In our quest to find the perfect campsite, nearby fresh water weighs in heavy on our ranking. All right, so Bailey's up first for the morning shower. How is it, baby? Great. How's your water? Quite as on the hot side. Warm water from Lake Powell in February. Well, thanks to a little propane. All right, don't use it all, okay? Yeah. And I wish we had two showers. So while Bailey's showering, I'm making a little bit more supplies for our fire starting kit. This is a Cecil rope. Just take it and cut it, and then take all of the individual threads apart and just make it kind of into like a big bundle of hair. And super flammable, and it burns really hot for a very short period of time, but enough to catch your fire. Because when you're in a place like this, there's no pine needles, there's no real brush to gather you got to have some kind of a backup with you. How was your shower? Good. You saved me any hot water? Yes. I think I'm up next. Okay. Plenty warm? Mm -hmm. Maybe a little too warm. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take too warm. All right, I am showered feeling awesome. 17 years ago, Natalie and I honeymooned in Aspen. This is a t-shirt that I bought this. So this is a 17 year old t-shirt that I thought I would break out today. Natalie, how's the shower going? Good. As luxurious as our honeymoon? Uh, no. What? <laughs> Not even close. Not even close. We're gonna have to get a better shower then. Hot tub maybe, you need a hot tub? <laughs> One thing great about this shower tent is it seals up really well. When the sun hits it, it warms up inside there. It's got a little sunroof on the top. If it gets really hot, you can open it. It's never We've, been that hot. Yeah, it's never been that hot for us at least. But it does really keep you out of the wind. It heats up in there. It's a great spot for taking a shower. Even today, it's probably about 50 degrees. But inside there, it's probably about 80 degrees when you get the warm water running. So. It's a good thing. Yeah, I don't think I had to pump my own water on our honeymoon. <laughs> You've seen our doctor prepare bag. It's got a foot pump on it. You pump it with your foot to pressurize it. We didn't do that on our honeymoon. They actually had running water there. <laughs> Bailey, you weren't there for the honeymoon. The novelty. All right, you got a shower. You feel great. Mommy, you're getting better? Yeah, I'm going to use all this water. Awesome. Yeah, use it up. That's all yours. And to be honest, we didn't we didn't shower yesterday. It was really cold today, so we were desperate for a shower today. Oh. Come on, hard down low. Oh, you got it. Yes. Got it. Good job. Good job. Straight. 
Okay, so for brunch today, we are making roasted avocados. We're going to stuff them. And hey, these, if you haven't done them before, these are a original invention of me. We were talking about what we we're going to do on this this trip. And I was like, you know what? We got to do some avocados roasted over the fire. So we might as well start with roasting some pits over the fire. What do you think? Yep. Mm, good avocados. These aren't giant Florida avocados. Years ago, we lived in Florida where the avocados are like almost the size of like, probably like a youth football. Huge. So good. But these are California Haas avocados, which are just big enough to feed a small chipmunk. You're straightening it up so we can pack up and go. All right, so here we go. This is something we thought of just a couple days ago, but check it out. Avocado, tomato, onion, and what do we put on the top? Uh, balsamic glaze. Balsamic glaze on the top and a couple turkey sausage. It's gonna be really good. Mm. Here, check that out. So check it out, grilled avocado. Mm. It is really, really good. Baby, this is like five-star restaurant right here. Yeah, pretty good, right? Mm-hmm. Incredible. So as we're packing up to leave this campsite, we're gonna head to some place that has less wind, a little, hopefully, uh, a little more protection from the wind. It hasn't been bad, but it's in the 50s and a little bit of breeze even kind of makes you feel a little bit cold. But wanted to show you what we've been doing on this trip. This is a tent insulator from 23-0. Now we don't have a 23-0 tent, but it does fit our Tough Stuff Ranger 3. Not perfectly, they're not quite exactly the same dimensions, but it's good enough. And this thing, I'm gonna tell you for sure, it makes a 20 degree difference. When we cover the whole thing up, we're at least 20 degrees warmer in here than we are outside. And this has been like really a lifesaver for us. Even with low water levels, the views are still amazing. But it's time to look for another campsite in this incredible canyon. Join us next Friday as our less windy campsite better resembles a tropical storm. It's going to get a little crazy. <laughs>